Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. It's a poignant tale of struggles, love, and loss. One man setting out on a journey of self-discovery that leads him to a relationship that will test his fundamental beliefs and to a destiny he never could have imagined. The book Chasing Diamonds by seasoned author David T. Straw. David has earned a reputation for a style of writing not only gripping the reader but also bringing the reader into the story. Many comment that once they pick up one of his books, well, it's hard to put it down until the story ends. David is a former teacher who grew up in Miami, now lives in St. Augustine, Florida. He's writing full-time, the author of two other books, Complimentary Tales and Lost in Notebooks, a collection of short stories. The author of Chasing Diamonds, David T. Straw, with us on This Week in America. David, a pleasure. Thank you for being with us on the program. Oh, thank you very much. It's wonderful to, uh, to be here. Really looking forward to talking about, as much as I can without getting too much away, the book Chasing Diamonds, and your reputation is well earned. I started reading that and lost uh, probably a little sleep. I stayed up a little later than I should have to see what was going to happen here. Really a nice job with with writing this book. And I mentioned that the time in the classroom. I get the feeling you probably feel comfortable behind the keyboard writing stories. I think that's where you should be. Is it fun having the opportunity to write these full time? Uh, it is very much so. I've uh, I've written my whole life since high school, but it was usually in a notebook or on a typewriter. And once teaching started, uh, it became a hobby pushed off to the side, so to speak. And uh, but it was always there in my head. And um, once I kind of turned my back on teaching, I was able to write full time, and it's um, it's something I love to do. And everybody loves to read. The latest book is Chasing Diamonds, and I, you're a master storyteller. Where did that come from, that ability, not just, you know, the, 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 the feature per, person of the book goes here, goes there, moves around, drives a car, whatever. You're very descriptive in doing it. Where did the storytelling ability come from? Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm a very visual person, and I've got a very vivid imagination, and... Uh, I just have a way of maybe showing what's in my head, uh, maybe in a different, unique way. Um, and the book is actually very old. I, I, I wrote it and typed it back uh, in the late 90s. Um, and it was a notebook for a long time. And uh, I finally word processed it, got it, got it out there. And it, it went through some changes from the original version. But um, I'm very, very happy with it. The book we're talking about is Chasing Diamonds. The author, our guest, David T. Straw. His website is storiesbydavidstraw.com. You'll find it at Book Venture as well. You can link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and go directly to David's website, storiesbydavidstraw.com. Where did this story idea come from? And then we'll talk about the main character in the book, Everett Lentry. Where did you get this idea? Um, originally, it was this guy... Um, and how the lake he spent his childhood at shaped him. Uh, and then we see Everett today, and you kind of learn what makes him say and do the things he does. Um, and it was originally, there were many flashbacks, and it was you went back and forth, the lake to his childhood to him now. Um, but then things changed, and I decided to kind of go with more of where he's at today. And the flashbacks sort of support what he's doing today and what he what he does his actions. Um, and I think at the time I was just starting teaching, uh, you know, transition in my life. Um, nothing as drastic maybe as as what happens in the book, but I think everyone does that. You kind of you're not quite where you thought you would be when you were younger. And I just let my mind run with what could happen to this Everett guy. Yeah, Everett Lentry is the uh, the main character in the book Chasing Diamonds, and you open with a with a scene at the lake, and he's talking about all of his dreams, expectations, standards, and hopes. All of that formed at the lake, and that sort of gives us the foundation for who this guy is. But boy, that that really was a creative part of his life, an important part of his life, wasn't it? Very much so. I mean, he's be, he's who he is because of of the lake. Um, and where he spent his childhood at. And um, it, in a way, it kind of haunts him. It's, it's his, um, I don't want to say his demons, but it's, it, it alters what he, his perceptions of where he is today. Um, 
and it, it kind of uh, it, it gives him some problems that he um, he has to try to struggle through. Yeah, and it's interesting because he he gets depressed when summer's over, and he has to go back to what he calls that depressing circle back in the in the neighborhood back home. He talks about it as sort of like going to a movie theater, where you're in the movie theater, you get energized, you see life in a brand new new way. You open the door, you get hit with sunshine, and reality smacks you right in the face. I love that because that happens so many times, where you know you're you're in a whole different world, and all of a sudden reality comes, taps you on the shoulder, and says, "No, no, no, that's not it. This is where you really are." Absolutely, yeah, and and, that, and everyone can relate to that. That's nothing of Everett or me or anyone in the book that's that's life yeah where is he in life when we pick up the story I, he's in the shower literally in tears because this really isn't where he wanted to be what's his emotional state of mind and then we'll talk about a, a business trip that he takes that uh, that changes everything um he's i mean he's he's midlife um he has two children that he adores greatly um, they might be the only thing keeping him going, uh, maybe in a way. It depends how you look at it. Um, and he's just going through the motions that everyone does. Again, it's nothing new. But, um, again, going back to what he he had growing up at the lake and, and all those visions and dreams he had, you know, it's not where he should be or wanted to be or where he even thought he might be. And so he's, it's just a, you know, it's a daily struggle to get through, but um, he's just going through the motions and he's not a guy that wants to just go through emotions. And he's been married for a number of years, but the marriage is sort of, uh, what, a prison. It's not something that gives him any any joy or satisfaction, is it? No, um, and that's most of it. Not most of it, but that's a lot of it. Um, And there was a, a relationship in his past that, uh, does haunt him and he always wonders what if things like that so that's there uh, his job which is fine um, maybe not as exciting as he had wanted um, and so all of this is kind of mixed together in his daily daily life you know it's interesting because he does find his soulmate unfortunately he's not with his soulmate and that's uh, again part of the story chasing diamonds david t straw the author the book available at uh, wherever books are sold, of course, but you can get information at David's website, storiesbydavidstraw.com. Link on our website, this week in America, uh, US, and go directly to that website. He's off on a business trip to Denver and meets uh, Nicole Summers there without giving a, a whole lot. Talk about that experience and this, this balance that suddenly he's, he's confronted with in, in, in his life. She represents everything he kind of um, maybe wishes he had uh, or an alternative way to get out of the life he's in. Um, like a lot of us sometimes um, feel or, or happen to. And uh, at first she's not what he thinks she is, but she turns out to be more than she thinks she is. Um, kind of outsmarts him at times, which is sometimes hard to do. And things just begin moving very, very fast. And take twists and turns along the way, thus hooking you as a reader that, okay, I think I'm going to try to squeeze in another uh, chapter or two before I call it a day and pick up the uh, the story tomorrow. It's a very enjoyable. Again, you develop these characters so well. Let's talk about that for a second. When you take a character and really define who that character is, we almost feel like like we know these people, that we're in their minds. You not just portray physically who they are and what they're doing, but emotionally as well. Talk about developing characters and uh, the challenges of presenting that, that, that type of picture to, to the reader. I think that's the most fun part about writing is you have to, that, that's my job, you have to bring the reader into those pages that they're right next to the character. They're in the car with them. They're at the table, you know, at breakfast or, or whatever. Um, and you've got to bring them to life and, and that they, if you're not in the pages with them, they come out to you, so to speak. And I think it helps the story, obviously. Um, 
and it's just a, it's a crucial part to, to make them believable and that you could walk out your door wherever you live and run into them on the street. Yes, and because of the way you describe them, we, we really feel like these are people that we know or could know, like you said, just meet on the street and, and run into them. Uh, talk about the, the writing style. Who were your influences? Where did you develop the style? How did you develop the style? Oh, Lord, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote a lot growing up. Um, I don't want to say secretively, but, you know, I didn't really share it. Uh, but I was able to get away and, 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 and write in my notebooks. Um, and like I said, I have a very good, pretty good imagination. And I just kind of, my ideas and thoughts and feelings and emotions just would come out on the page. And it just led to the stories I was able to kind of imagine and come up with. Um, I don't know if there was one author or one book that, you know, just blindsided me. And from that moment on, I, I had to write. Um, like anyone, you know, I, I, you could relate to Holden Clawfield. You could relate to, you know, any any character in, in, in a Hemingway story or, you know, whatever. Or, not, or books that are not popular or known, you know, a book that someone would have never heard of before, but it just struck you in a certain way. And I don't know, I, I kind of hope that answered your question. Well, yes, um, yeah, it's interesting. And I, I wonder the role that the, that observational powers plays into this as well. I can, I can see you looking at somebody, you're out shopping, you run somebody, an interesting looking character, probably trying to imagine the backstory for this guy. Is that part of observational skills? Is that part of the uh, success you've had in writing? Yes, very much so. Actually, you mentioned that. Um, I before writing, I I really come up with these characters, and I write like a page or two biography on them, uh, you know, almost like a resume, where I just invent, bring up these people and and what they've done, where they're from, um, and a lot of it may never be in the story. You would never know it, but just knowing all of that, if there's a scene later in the book that the character says or does something, I know where they're from and I know what makes them tick and I know what they would say or do at that moment. That might just be something subtle. It might not even be a huge conversation, just something little they would do knowing who they are. Um, and in my other book, there's a lot of characters that bounces around. And again, I had to come up with all of these people and just I had huge bios on them all, like you'd think they were a you know family tree or something, but it's just I know where they come from and I know what makes them tick and what they will say or do because of it. You do that ahead of time, so you have all these people laid out. Now you've got to take all of these people and weave them together into the story. How do you go about doing that? You've got the, the basically the components, now I have to put it together to to make an interesting story. It kind of just flows out. Um, I will skip around at times. I've written the ending to um, a story first and then go back. Um, I'll skip areas that I'm not too sure about how to, how to do when something else is hitting me and I just keep going. But um, I don't know. I, I'm very lucky, I guess. I'm able to just kind of, it just flows out and I'm able to get my thoughts and show them on paper through the keyboard, I guess. The book we're talking about specifically is Chasing Diamonds, David T. Straw. His website is storiesbydavidstraw.com. Book also available at bookventure.com in the bookstore. And you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You mentioned notebooks, and you've got the compilation of short stories, three short stories lost in notebooks. And it's interesting, some of these were written a long time ago. The one story, Tension, was written in 1988 when you were 16 years old. Tell me about going back and looking at at what you wrote before. And can you tell a difference, of, almost sort of a maturity as a writer, or do you feel that, you know, at that age you pretty well captured it? Uh, I really liked detail back then. Um, I, I did. I, I started that about 16. I was 17 when I finished it, and um, it was much longer. I was really into details, and I had to go back and thin it out a little bit. Um, I think it was very rough. Uh, obviously, you're in high school, um, and it was it, it was rough. 
a rough draft, really. But um, I think the the core of it was there because it was me. I mean, I, I can't fake that. So um, when I wrote that one or the other two in there or the others I have um, that were written a long time ago, I think it was all there. It may need to be polished a little bit, which is what I did when I typed them up, just make them a little easier. But um, I think it was it was there. Uh, you know, again, it was something I did a long time ago, and it was it was in me. So when it came out, that's that's what it was. What are you working on now? Uh, I've, I'm on a new book. Um, I'm in about, I'm in the middle of it, and uh, it's about three people different jobs um, back in New York City in 2007, 2008, when right before everything kind of hit and came to an end there with the, with the crisis. Yes. Um, one's a teacher, one's a financial analyst, and there's a bartender. So you kind of have all three, um, <laughs> you know, all three cliched, you know, jobs or people. Um, but you know, things happen to them. They kind of come together in different ways. They, um, their lives are very similar, even though one's in a classroom and one's, you know, crunching numbers all day. But, um, and kind of what happens to them. Uh, but it's, it's kept me busy and, uh, it's, um, I'm, I'm very excited and happy about it. And I'm looking forward to having a chance to read that. When do you think that'll be published? Oh, I have no idea. Um, (laughs) it's, uh, I'm I'm about halfway I think oh, and okay. um it's 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 very long right now I I might end up having to you know kind of thin some things out uh excuse me that's my phone um that's okay so, it's a publisher uh, calling he wants the new book immediately I'm I'm <laughs> Anyway I'm sorry um so I'm not sure but I'm about halfway I know where it's going I know what's going to happen um and I just, I'm kind of getting there, uh, and hopefully in, in a year, year or two, it's 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 out there. I, I hope. Got a couple minutes left in the program. I mentioned this is full time. This is your passion. This is what you do. Do you set up a time every day where okay, it's writing time now, and then shut it off when writing time is over, or how do you go about with the process of of, of sitting down and writing? I can't shut it off. That's my problem. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, I can. It's I can been understand in my that. Head. Forever, I know what you mean, but yes, um, I, I write during the day. I'm I'm a I'm a night person. Uh, there have been times I've I'm writing, and stuff's just coming into me, and I'm going, and I look up, and it's two in the morning. Um, you know, I have two children, and uh, I'm running them around. He plays tennis. She's in ballet. Uh, errands. You know, there's things to do. So um, I'm not just hold up held up in a room you know, on a typewriter typing all day. But uh, when I can find time, I tend to, to get on the laptop and go. Um, you know, I was sitting in the parent pickup line the other day picking up my kids, and I, I had a notebook out. Something hit me, and I was <laughs> out. And later that night, I got it out, opened it up, checked it out, and you know, tweaked something in the story. So um, it, it's always on. I can't turn it off, which I really i am not going to complain about. Um, but I find time when I can and, and I enjoy it. Uh, but at the same time, I've got to balance it with, you know, everything else going right. on in, in my life, you know, like everyone does. Well, it's amazing. You talk to some people and they, you know, three 30, I'm going to shut down and that's it. And you've got, you know, characters and storylines suspended. I don't know how you just walk away from that. To me, that almost becomes part of your life and somewhere in your mind, you're contemplating what's going to happen next and how you develop, uh, how you flesh this out, how you tie everything together. So I, I can understand exactly what you're talking about. The book specifically we talked about in the program today, Chasing Diamonds. It's an excellent read written by David T. Straw. His website is storiesbydavidstraw.com. Book also available, of course, at the usual places, uh, Book Venture, Barnes & Noble, at Amazon. Link on directly to David's website by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You'll also get information on his other two books, Complimentary Tales and Lost in Notebooks, a collection of short stories. David, this has been fun having you on the program. We'd love to stay in touch, and uh, I'm fascinated by the, uh, the the trio you've got in the, in the new book. I'll be looking forward to that. Thank you for being with us on the program. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. 
David T. Straw, our guest on the program. The new book is Chasing Diamonds. Information, of course, available at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. <music> 